Would you please stand and join in the opening hymn found on the front page of the worship aid? As we have gathered to celebrate Pentecost today, we are going to do, because this is a bigger feast, a couple different things. And I know that most people are probably coming to a Mass at 1 o'clock with, with, uh, with now Father Anthony, who was ordained yesterday along with five other men. Uh, uh, so, but I, I, so we are maybe fewer in number than we normally are on a Sunday morning, but that's okay. We are going to be doing a couple additional things, like singing some of the things we don't normally sing. Just follow along in the worship page. It should be fine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie Oh, oh, oh. 
great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you are Lord of the Holy One. You are Lord of the Lord. You are Lord of the Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they called, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O oh Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. 
take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, immorality, impurity, lust, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit, come, and from thy celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, thou Father of the poor, Come, thou source of all our store, come within our bosom shine. Thou of comforters the best, thou the soul's most welcome guest, sweet refreshment here below. In our labor rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat, Solace in the midst of woe. O most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of thine, and our inmost being filled. Where thou art, not man hath not, nothing good indeed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Here our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness pour thy dew. Wash the stains of guilt away, bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen warm, the chill, guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess thee evermore, in thy sample gift descend. Give them virtue, sure reward. Give them thy salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening, of that first day of the week, where the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the, the, gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus If you're gonna set something on fire, you better be committed to this. Because when you set something on fire, it gets used up. You light a couple logs on fire in a fireplace. You light a candle. It's gonna be, it's gonna get used up. You better have understood that once you've lit it on fire, it changes it completely. It turns it into, you know, it, it, it isn't the same thing you have anymore that you had before. That candle at Easter, when we lit it for the first time, it was a foot taller. And it's pretty tall to begin with. But that's 50 days worth, a month and a half or so, of the candle burning, but using itself up. As long as you don't mind not having a candle later, after it all gets used up, you can set it on fire. But you gotta be committed to the act. You have to be committed to the act. Um, this is better, I think this is better. You better be committed if you're gonna light it on fire. When it comes to, um, I suppose arsonists do this themselves, you know, they, they're committed to burning a house down, they're committed to burning a house down, but they also need to be committed to an insane asylum. But, uh, f fire then is a very potent symbol. We talk about somebody who's who's passionate, we say, oh, they're on fire. Or maybe that means they're also kind of a hothead. That could mean different things. Somebody who might be on fire might be somebody who's generally very angry. But, uh, but usually it means that they're passionate. And if they're passionate about something, it means they're going to go and spend themselves for whatever they're passionate about. Um, someone who's committed to a cause, whether it's a political cause or a, a, a rebel cause or, or even some sort of charitable work. I'm committed to making this, this um, uh, uh, halfway house work. I'm committed to getting this person elected. I'm committed to uh, passing this legislation. I'm committed to going and saving the world. 
uh, from whatever it happens to be. Uh, if someone is, we know these people, or we are these people, they're committed to something, they're on fire for it, and they spend all their energy on that. And they, because they spend it on this, they don't spend it on other things. It's, um, they have to pick something to choose, I'm gonna spend my energy on this. This is where my passion is. For some people it's art, for, and for all of us it should be our families, of course. We spend our time and our energies for our families. We heard in the first reading that Jenny read from the Acts of the Apostles that tongues of fire came down and rested on top of each of the apostles and upon each of the disciples who were there gathered together praying. God has set them on fire. But if God's going to let's sort of light them on fire, if he's going to put into himself his Holy Spirit, if, he's going to, uh, if he wants them to uh, to be passionate about spreading his word, about living differently, about living the way that Jesus lives, then he first has to confirm that these people are, are, are ready for it. Jesus took a lot of time training them when he was on, here on earth. And, and by, by um, sending them the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, he's in a way confirming them. He's confirming that, and this is why we use the word confirmation for, for those, who, we just had a confirmation, well last November we had a number of our, of our young people confirmed right here, the bishop came and they were confirmed by him. And, and when they're confirmed, the Holy Spirit is put into them. It's a continuation of this, it's a continuation of Pentecost. Um, but it's only because we have seen that God has set them on fire, God has um, they, and they themselves have been committed to living this life, be, being a part of uh, the, the Christian people. And then the bishop comes in and confirms that in them and, and makes sure that they have the Holy Spirit sealed into them. But that's so that they can let go be spent. Jesus tells them in the gospel here, I just read. Um, I, Father, Father sent me and I spent myself for you, so I send you. And he tells him to go out to all the world, baptizing everybody, and, and then making known his forgiveness, forgiving them. Uh, this, is, um, this is how he needs them to spend their lives. And, and to spend really means to use up, maybe slowly, like the candle, you know, a day at a time, a, a, a foot at a time, that the candle is spent, um, but it's always being spent for a good reason. You, you're going to light the fire in the fireplace. It gives you light and warmth and comfort. It does spend your resources, yes, but it gives so much more in return. You have no idea how many candles I have around the house that I never light because I just turn on the light switches instead. I, I think I'll wait, I think, I think I'm going to hold them until until it's, um, until there's a power outage or something. And yet, if I just turn off the lights and light, lit a couple candles, it gives something different. It gives something different than just the electric lights turn, turning on give. They get, uh, the flickering flame of a candle gives warmth and gives comfort and gives a sense of ambiance. The fire that God gives is different than any of the light or any of the fires that we can get here on earth. Instead, we are given we are given this light of God. It strengthens us. It, it, uh, it, um, it gives us the energy and the, and the direction that we need from God to go and live our lives uh, following in Jesus' ways. And, and yes, God has spent his energy and time on us so that we can spend that same fire, that same energy on, uh, on others and, and really benefit each other in the whole world in a way that we, we wouldn't be able to without, without the help of God, without having God's life to spend. That fire, that candle symbolizes God's life that has been placed into us for us, not to keep for ourselves, but to spend. So having been set, set on fire by God, recognizing that he, he's, he's committed to us, we can then, we can then pass it on 
and spend it in similar ways that Jesus shows us for each other, and indeed to save the whole world. The creed, if you need it, is inside the worship page. We're using the shorter one today, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. My brothers and sisters, our festival concludes today with Pentecost, the start of the new community that Jesus forms, the whole church. And so through our prayers, let us entrust our lives and our prayers to our Lord. We pray that the wonders of God's deeds and the splendor of his word may be praised in every language throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. For Pope Francis, Bishop Edward, and all who lead the church, that they recognize the Holy Spirit in their work and ministry to God's people, we pray to the Lord. That as we experience the love of God for us here on earth, we may be united by his love in the eternal banquet, we pray to the Lord. We pray that the power of the Holy Spirit may reconcile the divisions between all people, we pray especially for peace in the Holy Land. We pray to the Lord. For those who are suffering from depression and despair, may the Holy Spirit liberate them from fear and lead them to peace and freedom. We pray to the Lord. We pray that all those who are sick in our families, our church, and our community, May God's spirit to bring them to wellness and healing, we pray to the Lord. We pray that those who have died may find comfort in the community of saints, especially Joan Aleka, Patricia Whalen, and Eleanor M. Ryan, we pray to the Lord. We pray for Maya, who was baptized today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those for whom this Mass is offered and for their families, Francine Heppel, Richard E. Greenway, Anne Kilborn, Primitive Cruz, and Alita Velez. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask that the gifts of your Spirit may embrace this world and bring us a new Pentecost of peace and hope. We ask this in all the prayers that we have brought to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Today is uh, our monthly second collection for the school. I thank you in advance for your generosity, if you're able to give anything uh, for in, in both collections. Thank you. Great gift from God above, you are the 
font of truth and light, the flame of hope and love. We thank you for the gifts of grace, O promised one of God. Your wondrous life becomes our own, your strength our staff and God. Then come great spirit to your own, our hearts make your and strong, direct our weary steps to you, and turn our wills from wrong. O oh, highest wisdom, fill us all with light to truly see, that in your love alone is hope to live eternal. Show us the Father and the Son, O Spirit, we implore, that in the Godhead we may live, both now and For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spirits will drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 To you, therefore, most, to you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these holy offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, 
To you, O God, is Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Re remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On your stay, we toll is peccata mundi, misere de nobis. On your stay, we toll is peccata mundi, misere de nobis. On your stay, we toll is peccata mundi. Dona nobis pacea. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter the world, but only say the word that no soul shall be healed. Oh, I'm Suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind. In the place where they were sitting, Alleluia. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and announced the great things God had done. Alleluia, alleluia. Spoken light was made. 
I am the seed that died to be reborn. I am the bread that comes from heaven above. I am the vine that fills your cup with joy. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my heart being given up for you. leads the exile home. I am the truth that sets the captive free. I am the life that raises up the dead. I am your peace, true peace my gift to you. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given 
that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry that I didn't put enough hosts out. Again, I was predicting that most people would be coming to one o'clock. So, uh, so some of us had to share a little smaller pieces than we normally would, but it's all, it's all, it's all Jesus, of course. It's all the body of Christ. As, we, um, as it is the day after the ordination and Anthony's having his first mass here, Father Anthony, I have to call him now. I have to remember to do that. There will be a party. So come back at two o'clock and there's lots of food over in the school gym. So come on over, well, one o'clock is the mass. Uh, so, um, but then right afterwards will be the party. And if you come early to help, if you wanna go over a little bit early to, you know, to help set up or to welcome people who are guests, Anthony has a number of visitors, family, who came from, who came from Nigeria, who came from Canada, who came from Rome, who came from all over the place. He has a friend who's a priest in Rome. I said, wow, that's exciting. So he's staying with us for the couple days here. So everyone, they're all going to be here, but if you want to be able to be welcoming and to be able to say, come on into our house, come on into our school gym, whatever you want to call it. Um, if, you, if you're able to come set up, making sure the food is all ready to go, come a little bit earlier than, than two, because there'll be some people over there from one o'clock, 12.30, one o'clock on. And then everyone from the mass will come over afterwards around two o'clock. And then we'll all have a big feast, and there's cake for everybody, and there's food. It'll be very good. And Nigerian food. If you've never ta tasted jollof rice, well, come. All right. Anything else you need to know is in the bulletin. Um, I'll be away this week, um, but things will be running fine with Father Kyle and uh, when with Barbara and everybody else. Uh, thank you to everybody, and um, happy Pentecost. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from rabbi evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith. And by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth the masses and it, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God, God. Alleluia, Alleluia. And we'll see you next week where, unfortunately, we won't be singing the entire Mass. I know, very sad. Oh, Holy Spirit, by whose breath Life rises vibrant out of breath Alleluia, Alleluia Hallelujah, hallelujah.